Here it is, Trajan's Column. That was part of the Forum of Trajan. It's one of the greatest monuments ever constructed in the ancient Roman Empire, and we have so much of it. It's integral. Now, it's created to honor Trajan. Trajan won the Dacian Wars, fought from 101 to 102 and 105 to 106, and the spiral narrative frieze on the exterior narrates those battles, fought and won. And it's a testament to the greatness of the Roman Emperor Trajan and the Roman army. And it's a pivotal piece within the form of Trajan. It ends up also being his final resting place. His tomb was placed at the base of the column. And at the top, there was a statue of Trajan. Today it's replaced in the 17th century by a statue of St. Peter. This is an engineering masterpiece. It's composed of 29 blocks of Carrara marble. Those blocks of stone weigh between 77 and 25 tons. Now at the base, you have the largest block of 77 tons, but at the base of the column and the capital section, those weigh about 55 tons a piece. So this is an incredible engineering achievement. How did they do it? There would have been a huge tower of wood, like a siege engine, erected around the space. And then one by one, those blocks would be lifted by multiple cranes powered by men working capstans to lift and slide in place each one of those drums. This is an incredible achievement. We get some sense of it when we look at the drawings by Domenico Fontana for the erection of the obelisk in the Piazza of St. Peter's. So we have some ideas, and yet it is still mind-boggling how the Romans did it. We know that Apollodorus of Damascus was the great builder for Trajan. He built Trajan's bridge over the Danube. He built the Forum of Trajan. He built the Baths of Trajan. It's very likely he was the designer and the builder of Trajan's column. Today, of course, it's off limits to the public. It's a fragile monument, but that passageway is still available, that is still accessible. And I'm going to take you up to the top for that view that you had in antiquity. It's still spectacular today. Let's go through and experience what it's like to climb up Trajan's column. The column, composed of 29 blocks, weighs over 1,100 tons. Today, its full height is 38 meters. That's 126 feet. The column proper itself is 29.76 meters. That's over 97 feet, essentially 100 Roman feet. Now, the shaft alone is 26.92 meters. The staircase is carved out of 19 of the blocks, and there's a full turn every 14 steps. The width of each drum is just shy of five meters. The helical staircase mimics the exterior narrative frieze, and it's 185 steps that you have to take to make your way to the top. From the exterior, over 40 windows illuminate your path. It's in pristine condition. The tool marks are still evident on the walls. We can take a look at the column here, and it's carved with over 2,600 figures. The Emperor Trajan appears 58 times, but we can also notice 40 windows. What are those windows for? Well, as you go up the spiral staircase, you need light. And as you progress upward, and kind of a dizzying effect of going up that spiral staircase, you're gonna need a little bit of that natural light to guide you through. So you see on the exterior how the windows pop up regularly and they are lined up. We see the same thing for the column of Marcus Aurelius. So what is so fantastic about this is that it was always conceived to be a monument through which you could have a view of the city. So you go through the history and you look at honorific columns and they're getting larger and larger and taller and taller. And this is the one that redefined the conversation because this one allowed you as the visitor, as the loyal subject of Trajan, as the worshiper of Trajan the God, to ascend mystically, magically, and enjoy that engineering achievement and enjoy a spectacular, intimate view of ancient Rome. You'll be looking over 
the gilded bronze rooftops of the Basilica Ulpia. You'd be looking out and roam all around you 360 degrees. It was a spectacular, spectacular experience which you had in antiquity, which you had in the Middle Ages, which you had in the Renaissance times, which we'll have today. Over the entrance is the original Roman inscription that reads, Senate and the people of Rome dedicate this to the Emperor Trajan with his titles to demonstrate to what great height the hill was and the place that was removed for such great works. So it's in reference to the removal of a grand portion of the Quirinal Hill that height of the hill destroyed is marked by the height of the column. And Trajan's ashes were placed in the base of the column after his death in 117, later joined by his wife Plotina. So the column became a tomb as well as a victory monument, always glorifying the Emperor Trajan. Walking inside Trajan's column. <laughs> not something you do every day. Here we are, getting up to the top, 185th step. And as we step out onto the platform, I think it's safe to say the images speak for themselves. Here's something you don't do every day. Stand up on top of Trajan's column. Incredible experience is being on top of Trajan's column. It's been here since the second century AD. We no longer have the statue of Trajan, we have the statue of St. Peter's. But the view and the experience of going in this column is absolutely priceless. Outside, the incredible reliefs. You have this tiny window, it's the only form of illumination. Thanks for watching. Smash that like button and subscribe for more adventures in antiquity.